Hey everybody, I've been getting a lot of emails from folks from all around the world um, asking me about the animals and about what I do and I figured I would do a video basically pertaining to that and um, I've also had several people ask me, they've noticed um, in my other videos that I have up of um, my garden and a lot of my flowers and stuff that I grow. Um, so I figured, well, what the heck, I might as well show some people some of that while I'm at it too, right? Um, so first let me give a shout out to my friends in London and all my friends down under. Um, London and Australia. Australia actually came in number one under my hits this week and London was the straight follow up and then America. What's that? Anyway, just giving a shout out to my Brits. I love London. I hadn't been down under yet. I've been to London, been to Stonehenge. It's amazing. Loved Ireland too. Thought it was pretty. But, you know, they might not have computers over there yet. I'm not sure. Do they, London? I, I don't know. But anyway, what I was figuring I was going to do today is, um, since I have my lovely assistant with me, um, lovely. that weighs in at about, you know, 200 pounds and real furry. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. I figured I would um, show some of the plants that I had. I don't keep um, typical plants. I sort of have a weird, um, well, what would you call it, John? You a would, plethora. A plethora of things um, that are unusual. I don't like typical plants. I never have. Um, Growing up here in the South, I've gardened my entire life. I grew up gardening. There's photos of me as an infant out in the garden, um, playing in the dirt. A lot of fun. And I've A been playing fun. in the dirt my whole life. And it is really a passion of mine. And it really has inspired me to um, get out here and create what I've created for myself, for my family, and for my animals. And it really is cool. So. That said, I wanted everyone to see my bird garden. Now, I have several different gardens around the house, which is not but, what is it, a quarter of an acre, John, something like that? Just about a quarter. And I created a specific garden to grow stuff for my birds in that was completely, 100%, totally from the dirt up organic. No pesticides, nothing. There is absolutely no chemicals used on this garden at all. So let me show this to everybody. Now, as you see, I've got lots of potted stuff. This is a mint that I had that hybridized. Um, it's real special. It's very, very strong and potent. I've got my lemongrass growing, which is wonderful. The birds love to play with the lemongrass, and oh boy, does that smell good. I love it. My white sage that I use for smudging. Um, a lot of people, Native Americans, they'd be able to tell you a little bit more about that than I'm going to get into with everybody on YouTube today. But um, then I have my night blooming cirrus cactus that was a gift from me from um, my dear friends over um, at Woodley's Garden Center that I have um, a display with some of my rescue birds at. So this is what I created. I've got just little simple mounds going on one side and then I've got all sorts of stuff on the left hand side. But um, I'm going to walk you through it. Over here we've mounted up, we've got some lettuces and kales, cabbages growing. Over here we have carrots. Um, they are just starting to come up. You can just start to see the little guys starting. So we're just getting those going. And then the rest of this, there's, yeah, there's a couple more. Now all of this is broccoli. I love broccoli. And I love broccoli. Man. And the birds do too. And it's good for all of us. So, got a lot of broccoli. Now, this is something fun that I did. My next door neighbor gave me this old bird cage. I'm sure a lot of people that have got these old bird cages have seen this style of cage before. But instead of using it as a cage, because it is an old cage, um, it's got rust on it. It's not good to be using for your birds anymore. So, retire the dang thing and buy a new cage. And I turned it into my strawberry pot. So, I've got it. And um, what I do is I just let my strawberries grow inside of it. And um, the birds and the little bugs and stuff, since it's elevated and up against the fence, 
it really is not messed with and um, I can grow my strawberries in there no problem I even um, actually I've got my two little birdhouses right here um, and I take old material that I find um, old hay or um, old roots work really well if you've been digging up grass and stuff and you got a bunch of old dried up roots um, you just kind of clump them together and this time of year the birds come and they'll gather them up and they'll use them as um, nesting material for um, the wintertime nests. So I always make sure I've got some nesting material sitting out. Then over here I've got the coolest little tomato. I'm going to go ahead and pick this so everybody can see what it looks like. Can I have it? No. I, I, let's let everybody look, look at it. For these were this was a gift from the um, uh, a Muslim friend of mine. Um, from Kentucky and they live with the Amish and the Amish grow these little tomatoes is that not cool looking it's awesome it's super cool looking the birds love them so but we're about out of tomato season another thing that I do thinking green is when I notice I come out here and I go oh look you know I've got my peppers coming out but What's an easy way to fertilize these peppers? Well, you can see there's little ants on it, which I don't have an issue with. Ants are not always a bad thing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what I do. This is how I fertilize my peppers right here. Get all that? See that? See that pollen? Just get that and then move on to the next flower. Get a little more and you get a little mixture going there. And then there's no way they're not getting fertilized. And you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that you're going to start creating peppers for yourself because you're taking the pollinization process into your own hands which you know I don't think mother nature's got a problem with me doing that you think oh John, no I, I think, think that's excellent actually I don't think she minds me that means mm -hmm. I've got more peppers for the birds I do it tomatoes at my garden it works really well and um, I love it so I've got my little peppers but this is actually what my square foot garden um, principle was I just used cinder blocks and every last one of these things is in a square foot and um, I've got everything from um, impatience to um, uh, coxcomb. coxcomb. I love this coxcomb. It's been seeding out down at the bottom and you just got to rub the bottom out to get the seeds and there's little teeny tiny little black seeds and I've got um, the coleus which is this grand chartreuse with a little bit of purple in it. Um, the begonias, which I just love, and just adds a little bit of personality along with the impatience, you know, down towards the ground level. And then as you walk around back, I've got just some little seedlings and stuff. Um, and then I've got my wild area, is what I call it. And this area I deliberately keep wild. I do not do anything to this area other than keep some of my potted plants for the winter time that I'm going to be growing and then reusing for the next year. I feel that everyone that gardens, and this was given to me by my grandfather, by his father, everyone that gardens, especially if you're a southern gardener, well, it doesn't matter. You got to remember one thing. One thing that's very really important is we, you got to work with nature. You don't just come in, plow everything up. You need to do it and you need to kind of harmonize yourself and with it to make sure that everything's going to be done properly and that nature is going to take care of your garden as much as you're taking care of it too with the bees, the butterflies, you know, the hummingbirds. You don't, don't get me started. So in every <laughs> garden, there needs to be a wild area. Come back here. Come on back here. Look at this. Now, I've got everything from gardenias to scrub oaks to wild wisteria to holly. And it is all grown up in a big mush cluster, and the birds love it. I get all sorts of little animals. I got rabbits, raccoons, possums, um, wood thrushes, wren birds, all sorts of finches, um, sparrows, doves. Um, we had two hoot owls tonight for last. Um, we've got all sorts of red-tailed hawks. We even saw oh, yeah. a bald oh, yeah. eagle fly over the house. That's they are awesome. actually, I, for the first time in my life, I got to see a bald eagle and it flew 
over my own house. So you know you're doing the right thing with the garden when you start seeing bald eagles flying over the house. You know what I mean? That's oh, yeah. America for you, baby. <laughs> so anyway, guys, this is the introduction video onto my garden. Make sure and comment. Tell me what you think about everything that I've shown you so far. And um, I love anybody's ideas, opinions. And um, make sure and like the video. And I hope to be getting emails from you guys soon.